Mr. Gates for five minutes. Admiral Aquilino, you know, during the Revolutionary War, I think it was like 15% of Americans who fought for liberty. Does that sound about right? 15, 20%? Uh, I couldn't answer that now, Congressman. I have to go back and look. I guess I'm just kind of wondering in Taiwan, what percent of the Taiwanese do we assess would actually fight in the event of kinetic conflict with China? Yeah, I also don't have that calculation. What I can tell you is uh, when the Russians invaded Ukraine, that was a pretty good wake-up signal for a lot of people uh, across the globe, and especially for those people on Taiwan. Uh, and we continue to execute our responsibilities under the Taiwan Relations Act uh, to ensure we support their ability to defend themselves. And, and does that the act require the development of a home guard in Taiwan? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the law. I'm not I don't specifically know if that... I don't think it does, but maybe you could talk a little bit about what, what the home guard theory is in Taiwan, how that would enhance their capabilities. Well, again, it's uh, what the people on Taiwan have done is they do have a reserve activation program. President Tsai just extended that to a one-year commitment. So, again, when I talk about the Taiwan, the people on Taiwan taking it seriously, uh, they are. It includes that approach that you've just articulated. Yeah, and I almost think that's what it's going to take because I worry that the Taiwanese military may be infiltrated by the PLA and that if there's really going to be a deterrent from a Chinese invasion, that might not come exclusively from the uniformed military or even the reservists. We may have to actually, um, you know, render capability to the hundreds of thousands of Taiwanese who don't want to be part of China, right? Yeah, your point is valid. And, and again, I believe that that approach is, uh, and actions are being taken there. What I would say is the example, the best example that I think exists is when Israel was attacked by the violent extremists in Hamas, the next day, 360,000 uh, Israelis reported for duty. That's the type of response that I believe. Yeah, but I take. worry that we conflate the cultural features there, right? Because it, what I worry about in Taiwan is kind of a replay of Afghanistan, where we look at some fake government and we do the normal kind of DOD thing of large weapon systems, and then we give them to that government, and then the real governing power in Afghanistan's case, the Taliban, in Taiwan's case, perhaps China, has the ability to then repurpose those assets against the United States. So it just seems to me, I mean, you, you are the guy, you're the person in charge of this, this theater. I think you need to know, you need to have some sort of assessment as to whether or not you're gonna get that Israel level response from the Taiwanese. You know, what percentage of, these, of this group of people is going to stand up and fight? And sure, we're all continuously informed by events going on around the world. But in Taiwan specifically, like we've seen cases where the PLA is infiltrating their government, their military. And, and I don't offer that as some sort of criticism. Heck, I think they, ought, they try to infiltrate our government and our military too. Um, but I worry, I worry whether or not um, we're going to be able to rely on the uniformed service there. So is there a plan at DOD to kind of make these assessments about a home guard and to ensure that you have small arms in the hands of these people that might, that might deter a Chinese invasion? Uh, Congressman, there absolutely is, and I'd love to talk to you about it in a classified setting. Great. No, it's, it's good to know. And uh, is that consistent with this porcupine theory that we, we think about often with Taiwan? Uh, I don't use the term porcupine theory. A lot of people do. What I would Why don't you use it? I hear it a lot on this committee. Well, again, I, I would articulate it in a way that uh, is in alignment with the law, which is we're providing uh, the people on Taiwan the ability, capability, and training to be able to defend themselves in time of conflict. That by itself, with regard to a strong uh, Taiwan sets of capabilities is a strong deterrent. Yeah, I just think this is a real important piece of the homework to emanate from this is to, uh, you know, we, you've talked about the Taiwan Security Engagement Act, I get that, but I, I think you and I are both a little unclear as to the extent to which that authorizes the work with the Home Guard that we really need to convert Taiwan into a, an effective porcupine because I assess that this is all about time. China cannot endure an extended war with Taiwan. They can't endure the sanctions. They can't endure the other consequences. And so if we can demonstrate to them that that's going to be a, a longer period of time, I think that pushes out uh, the, 
you know, the inevitability of a kinetic conflict with China. So appreciate the exchange, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.